Hello again, everybody. Uh, how, how are you feeling uh, after all this hard work today? <laughs> we thought that we will give you a bit of like fun time with this talk. So for example, my talk is just going to be about all the cool <coughs> applications that are related to natural language processing and that are using machine learning techniques that you learned about uh, during these two days and in particular that you learned about today. So uh, we'll give a short introduction to natural language processing. Uh, we will look at, uh, into what it is, uh, what are the typical tasks it involves, and actually it is very hard nowadays to talk about natural language processing without mentioning all these recent advances in the field <coughs> and all the cool, new and exciting applications. So we will look at uh, natural language processing field through the perspective of these new and exciting applications, and that's also why we are talking about that here today. So. Um, Sorry, who thinks that they know what natural language processing is about and um, who has ever used a natural language processing inspired application? Can you give an example? Cortana. Sorry? Cortana. Okay, yeah, that's a good example. Anything else? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's are all good and valid natural language processing applications. But <coughs> even closer to home, our spam uh, filtering from yesterday is a typical example of a natural <coughs> language application task. But, so to give you a very small introduction to what natural language processing is, let's go back to the basics. So we all speak, we all read, and we all write. And that's all we are doing using language. But it doesn't uh, really stop there, because if you think about that, you also think about the world in terms of words, you make plans in terms of words, you dream in terms of words, and you make the decisions using words. So in fact, when you're talking about natural language processing applications, they can span all these different uh, fields, including uh, world understanding and uh, perception. So what is the natural language processing? It involves their computer science applications as well as linguistics applications, uh, but it is also driven by all these advances in the machine learning, and it uses and is heavily uh, involving uh, these applications from the machine learning field. And it also is an integral part of the artificial intelligence. And you will see this later today, hopefully during the talk. So we've been talking today about the uh, neural networks and the deep learning. <coughs> so we've seen that they are inspired by the biological neural networks. And uh, we've also seen that they attempt to uh, model how we reason, how the human brain works and solves the tasks uh, by uh, creating these artificial neural networks. And deep learning refers to these neural networks that actually build even more higher abstract uh, models and involves more uh, hidden layers. So uh, it should be noted that due to the advances in the machine learning and the artificial neural networks, many applications in the natural language processing field have also advanced. And it's an interesting note here because uh, natural language processing, computer vision, all these fields have been the ones that were traditionally attributed to like human perception and were quite hard to solve using the more traditional machine learning techniques. So uh, due to these advances in the field, uh, during the past couple of years, so many tasks have been actually solved or we have the breakthroughs in them. So that's basically the main topic of the talk. So we will just look now at all these uh, exciting applications. So that's why the um, proper name for this talk is Natural Language Processing Meets Deep Learning. So we will specifically be looking at the applications from the recent couple of years. So for Natural Language Processing fields, it all started with the work of Mikolov. So all the links will be available so you can check their uh, papers and their applications as well. So they looked at the analogy task. They asked, uh, if man is in some relation to woman, in terms of words, then uh, what would be the words that kin is in the similar relation to? Any, any takers? Queen. Uh, we can basically reason about that in terms of the meaning of a word kin minus the meaning of a word man plus the meaning of a word woman. And that way we can uh, derive the word queen. In the same way, we can basically move from the word king to kings and the word queen to queens. So now, a bit of uh, quiz time. <laughs> so if you know that there is some relation between the words Einstein and scientist, what do you think would be the word that will be predicted for, the, for Messi, for Mozart and Picasso? Mozart. 
Any ideas? Player? Composer? Artist. Okay, do you want to see what the machine predicted? <coughs> That's the answers. So it predicted that Messi's midfielder, which is not far from truth. Uh, Mozart, violinist, Picasso, painter. So it's quite close to human reasoning nowadays, right? But it's, it's slightly different, but it's still uh, using the same kind of logic. Now, uh, what about this analogy? If we know that Japan is related to sushi, what is Germany related to? <laughs> Plenty of options. <laughs> nice, but yeah, you need to, to um, kind of use the same reasoning, right? So it's more in terms of food. <laughs> but beer is a good, is a good answer as well. Uh, what about France? <laughs> nice. Uh, what about USA? Nice. So do you, do you want to see what the machine predicted in that case? It's Germany bratwurst, <laughs> France tapas, uh, and USA pizza. So you see it's not always kind of uh, following the human reasoning and human logic, but uh, in a way we can see, maybe using the, our knowledge about the machine learning field now, uh, that what, it's, it ha what it uses as uh, the basis for prediction is a lot of data that it has been exposed to. So that's why this kind of reasoning might be not very same as human reasoning, but quite close still. So this is quite an impressive result already, believe me. So uh, if we want to know a little bit how, this, um, how, how the machine performs these tasks, how it uh, gets the representation of the words, we can think of that as a multidimensional space where all the words and all the meanings live. So imagine in your brain, for example, uh, you have these uh, representations of the words and you also know that similar words live somewhere close together. So we can kind of replicate that in terms of mathematical um, structures and recreate that as this multidimensional space. So that's basically what the machine is doing. And each dimension in this space encodes some bits or some aspects of the meaning. And also we want uh, to have the similar concepts in this space uh, to live closer together, right? So um, let's think how we can uh, do that. So if we think about how we humans uh, derive the meanings and get, the, get to know what a queen is, we are basically exposed to a lot of examples throughout our lifetime. So we might, be, we might see uh, uh, the kings and queens on the news, we might read some stories about them, we might read the news again, uh, um, we might hear about them. Uh, we Basically, we are exposed to a lot of examples throughout our lifetimes. So, but how can we do this? How can we make the computer have the same kind of knowledge? So, that's basically just a representation of what are the different sources of knowledge that we as humans have. But, uh, for example, in terms of natural language processing, we can still replicate this process by just giving the uh, machine enough data to learn from. So we can, see, we can still see how the word queen is used in, in the context of all the other words and kind of derive the meaning of the words in terms of these other words. So we know uh, approximately what queen means by uh, seeing the other words that are related to that just in the surrounding context. So that's the basic idea behind these models. We just build them in this multidimensional space and when I said that the different dimensions encode different kind of aspects of meaning, we can imagine that as follows. So if we are just looking at the flat representation of this multidimensional space, we can assume that one dimension might be encoding something like royals and other dimension something like non-royals. So then king and queen should be close enough in this, um, along this dimension of royals, whereas further away from somebody like minister. So that's basically how the machine <coughs> understands what the word mean. And we've seen these examples for the vectors in multidimensional space in terms of features, right? So that's basically a very similar idea. We're still working with vectors. So we have a lot of experience as humans to learn the meaning of their words and different concepts. Machine can do the same uh, if we give it enough data and if we tell it what to look at as features. So now if we go back to our example about kings and queens, we can understand this formula of meaning of king minus meaning of man plus the meaning of woman in terms of vectors. And so we can just apply simple algebraic uh, operations on these word vectors. So that's kind of like the magic that goes behind the scenes in these applications.
So now we said that we can speak, and now we see that the machines can speak as well. So uh, this goes from, um, this actually ranges across all the different types of applications involving uh, speech recognition and understanding speech to speak in different languages. So uh, we've said that we've been looking uh, at the quite recent applications just within the last couple of years. So it's been recently announced that uh, a neural network uh, based system can now understand two different languages. Why this is important is because the two languages, Mandarin and English, are quite different. So this system uh, can do that without any kind of additional tuning. So it can separate languages from noise. It can understand different languages as well as different uh, accents. And when we are talking about speaking different languages, there has been a research in this area as well where the researchers managed to basically not only place their words that mean similar things in one language, as we've seen before, but they also managed to place their words according to, for example, gender uh, differences. Uh, they uh, placed the words against different languages. For example, we know that in English we just have the president, but in French we have le président and la présidente, and the same for monsieur and monsieur. So uh, this system can already do that across different languages. So the way it does that, it represents these um, words in uh, the two languages separately. And then it tries to minimize the distance between the two languages, the two language representations. And that way, it can learn the correspondences between the words that mean similar things in two different languages. So that's basically their kind of, um, their what is going on behind the scenes in this kind of application. So then we mentioned that we can read. And the recent applications show that the machines can kind of replicate this human activity as well. So uh, they can understand news stories, uh, they can understand uh, language at the character level involving how we write the different characters. Uh, one of the cool applications from DeepMind, maybe you have heard about this um, company, they have recently solved and uh, they managed to build a system that can outbeat uh, a human play in the, play in the game of Go. So they have also been working a lot with natural language processing. And they recently um, wrote a paper about this system that basically reads the news stories and then being presented with a question can correctly uh, answer the question based on the story that has been told in the news. So uh, it uses a um, combination of a neural network that gets the representation of the text and uh, a number of linguistic patterns which basically encodes uh, the order and the relation between the different um, agents in the statement and then given a question they fi find the correct answer to that one. Okay, and now in terms of writing, um, who uses a um, smartphone with text prediction when writing uh, messages? All right, so there's been a cool application about that as well. So uh, basically, um, again, using a neural network, the researchers showed that the system can improve. So, uh, if you compare the two examples here, let's just focus on the one in the middle. The system, uh, the basic idea behind this system is that when you start typing something like I'll meet you at them, the system would predict the most probable words after that. So maybe you want to say at the end, maybe you want to say at the moment, maybe you want to say at the same, like at the same time. And it places the most probable suggestion in the middle. So the more traditional uh, uh, system you can see that example on the left, predicted the three words and moment and same. These types of systems are based on uh, something called language, uh, model, um, language models. So given their previous words in the sequence, they're usually just looking at the two previous ones. It tries to predict what is the most probable next one uh, based on the probabilities that have been calculated on the data the system has seen before. So if you think just about these two words, add them, you can say that uh, all the three words, moment uh, and same, are quite probable. Whereas probably you would not follow uh, with this um, phrase uh, using the word was. It's quite improbable. So it already distinguishes between these, two, these uh, different options. But what it cannot do is to basically consider a broader context. Because if you know that the, the beginning of this phrase was, I'll meet you at them, 
you probably wouldn't predict neither of those three words, but you would rather predict something that is related to a place. And the neural uh, network language models are capable of doing that. So they are learning the representation of each word, and then they also learn how these words are connected together in a sentence. So that's basically the breakthrough in this area. Then another announcement from Google quite recently was that uh, they now have a chatbot that can argue the meaning of life with a human. So for example, if you write something like, what is the purpose of life? It would say, to serve the greater good, and so on. So the way this system works is, again, it learns from a big number of data that a big number of different uh, combinations and sentences it has seen before and it knows which uh, sentences are the most probable continuations of the conversation. And then something uh, maybe even cooler is that uh, they have a system which is called Smart Reply, which can basically automatically reply to some of the emails that you receive. Again, maybe that's not that surprising because if you think about that, sometimes you would just reply with a very short sentence to something like, if you, if you receive an invitation to a party, you would just say, count on me, count me in, or sorry, I can't make it. So the thing is, many of those phrases are also quite similar. So if you know that you receive some, something like, are you free tomorrow or does tomorrow work for you, this would involve the same kind of replies. So this system can basically find the similarities between all these phrases and predict what the answer is. And then quiz time again. So quite recently, just half a year ago, I've seen this post or, or this article on the New York Times, which says it has like a shocking, um, um, a shocking title saying like so many different things that we read nowadays <coughs> actually not written by humans. Can you distinguish between <coughs> the ones that are automatically generated and the ones that are written by humans? Let's try to do that. So the first one uh, reads as a shallow magnitude 4.7 earthquake was reported Monday morning five miles from Westwood, California, according to the US Geological Survey. The Tumblr occurred at 6.25 <coughs> a.m. Pacific time at a depth of five miles. So who thinks that this has been written by a human? Who thinks that that was written by a machine? So why? Why a human? Why a machine? There is a capital letter in the after the dot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that suggests that it is written by a machine. That by a machine. Well noticed, so what does this suggest? Yeah, can a machine make a typo? So did you vote for a human or for a, for a machine? Okay, so you see that's not kind of an easy task. We can't really agree on that. What about the second one? Apple's holiday earnings for 2014 were record shattering. The company earned uh, an 18,000 billion an 80 year, uh, billion dollar profit on uh, 74.6 billion in revenue. That profit was more than any company had ever earned in history. So who thinks this has been written by a human? And others think this has been written by a machine, right? So it's more like 50-50. Do you have any kind of intuition <laughs> why uh, or how you can distinguish between the two? Okay, so what does that suggest? But to me, humans don't generally say what is record shattering. It's not, a, it's not a common expression. Okay, so you think this suggests this is a machine? For me, for me it's quite the opposite. Okay, so we can't really agree on that, right? Compare it with what we had before. Mm -hmm. the, the, the language was neutral. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so what would you say about these two? Uh, which one is a machine, which one is a human? Okay, let's see the answers. The first one was written by a machine, the second one was written by a human. But you all see this is quite a quite a hard task nowadays, so we can't really say or predict why 
one is written by a machine, why another one is not. And there has been research into automatic writing the poems, automatic writing the um, uh, lyrics for songs and everything else. So basically, <laughs> it's all going quite crazy. So does this suggest that machines nowadays can understand the world? Uh, well, first of all, if we think about that, the understanding of the world goes through all these different feelings and perception. Uh, and we've already mentioned that uh, machine learning uh, in this uh, past couple of years uh, allowed this breakthrough in a couple of different areas, including the computer vision and natural language understanding. So can we basically combine the findings in two areas and uh, build them within the same framework? It turns out we can. So uh, if we again think about these analogies, there's been a recent paper where they do the same, uh, but uh, now uh, combining the visual information with the information coming from words. So if you have a picture where you, ha you see um, a plane and you say minus flying in words, and then you say plus sailing again in words, you will be able to find pictures of a sailing boat which means we're using the same type of analogy, but this time we are also using visual information and we are able to combine both of these sources of information into one joint framework. And even further than that, nowadays we can also identify and name the objects in the pictures. We can, uh, in a very similar way as the machines understand in the news stories, uh, they can also understand uh, what is going on in the images and in the movies. And I can provide all these links to the papers and the research if you're interested after the talk. So just a couple of um, useful links. So um, it's quite interesting to keep an eye on Google research. Uh, like MIT Technology Review publishes a lot about these uh, papers and uh, the new breakthrough in the area. And uh, nowadays people quite often upload their papers on archive <laughs> so you can have access to all this information and basically keep an eye on how the field progresses. So thank you very much for your attention. I'll be glad to <laughs> answer your questions.